after I filmed my video, I did come across some footage. I keep mentioning this old rocker and the pieces that I use. Well, this is the scrap wood that I use, some of it anyway. I'm sure there's going to be more projects, but I did want to show it to you. Well, hi, y'all. I'm out in the garage again, as usual, and what I have to work with is scraps of wood, so I've got to get started on this here. Uh, these were scraps of wood from a rocker, a wooden rocker we had out front. It was a double seater, and it was just falling apart. So my husband took it apart, and I saved the wood from it. And what I've got up here is this was probably either the back or the front, or the seat, I don't know which. But there's three slats. And of course, I'm going to somehow cut out up top a handle and sand this down and put it together and figure out where I'll go from there. And these here were the armrests. And I'm going to do the same with those. So that's the two items I'm going to be working on from scraps of wood from an old porch rocker. Okay, this is what I've come up with. I just have coming in here and then I've drew it straight up there. And I'm going to cut these off and then I'll use those pieces to come over here and get this the same way. Well, I've decided to do it a little different. I went ahead and made the pattern. I traced the pattern from over here, cut it out and put it over here. Now I'll trace it onto that and go cut it out. But I've done that because I do have quite a few more slats. And if I want to do this again, and I like the way this looks, I'll have the top pattern for it. I've got this all cut the way I want it. I just cut some uh, little slats to run around across there, I'll glue it in between and then glue those with some brad nails. Now I've got to start working on this one, see how I want that one done. Okay, I'm gonna be using my, uh, the stuff I mix up to, to uh, weather my, to give my wood a weathered look. And uh, I thought I needed to get some more mixed up because it takes it to a while to get to the point where it it works so i thought well i might as well just show you how easy it is to do and all i do is pour straight white vinegar in there and put some steel wool in it uh, the finer the steel wool, the less particles you have. I have, this is not fine at all, but I'll use it. And I had a comment to uh, maybe strain it using coffee filters, and I did. And I had to keep dumping it because it clogged up the coffee filters pretty fast. I went through, I think, four or five coffee filters, and I finally got it. Uh, strain, but really, once you use it, you just, I mean, you put it on and it's not that bad, and I just wipe it off with a, uh, a towel or something, but I went ahead and strained that just to see, and I haven't used it since I strained it, so when I use it here in a little bit, I'll know if it worked, but that's all you do is put your white vinegar in, drop that in there, and let it set, and I, th I think it takes about a week to start really showing in two weeks to where it gets really good to use. But I'm not, I can't remember. But I'm gonna have this one ready when my other one's gone. Okay, now I'm just using my vinegar mixture and putting it on my wood. And I'll take it outside and let it dry because it is wet. It does take it a bit to dry. Okay, before I take this one outside to start drying, I thought I'd let you see the difference in the color of the wood. They're the same exact wood, they were the same color, and this hasn't even dried yet. So, there is the difference in the color. And that's just water or vinegar and still wool mixture. 
Okay, this one here is the dry one, and this is the wet one. You can sure see where I miss getting the uh, varnish off the boards. Okay, I'm going to let that one dry. Turn this one around, make sure it's good and dry back here. Okay, this is just going to be an easy one to do because I'm not going to do a lot to it. It's just going to have, uh, I made these stencils in my Cameo, the Silhouette Studio. And it says Oklahoma, and then it's going to say 1889. And that was the year of the land run in Oklahoma. And this is going to be noisy, so I'm just going to do this one last one and pull it up and see what it looks like. Okay, looks like it's all done. Let's pull it back. I have it taped down. Looks good. Okay, I'll set that aside and I'm gonna start on this part here, the Oklahoma part. Well, I have finished uh, stenciling it, so I thought I'd bring you back and we'll take the tape off and see what it looks like, if I can get it up. Looks good. Boy, I love making my own stencils because I'm sure I will use this one again in something. If I don't think I'm going to use it again, I won't usually make a stencil. won't go to the work cutting it out, but I'll just do it with a stencil vinyl. But I, I really figured I'd reuse this one. Okay. There's what that turned out like. And I just don't know of anything else to do to it. I mean, it's just supposed to be a rustic board. I like the way it looks. I don't know if I'll put anything here. And I don't know how I'll put a hole up here because it's right between the boards where the middle is, but... I'll figure it out and see what I'm going to do. All right, there's the first one done. Now I'll go get my second one. It should be finished drying. And I'll start on it. I like the color of the wood. It looks like old wood, except for where I didn't get the varnish off. Now, if this had been the front, I would have spent more time getting that off of there. But I like the way it looks. And I like what I have on there because that is the date of the land run in Oklahoma. Well, on this one, I'm painting it white, and then I will, I'm going to stencil on this one and put the uh, large rooster from the Law Campaign stamps, IOD stamps. That's my plan on this one. I have to get this all painted and then let it dry before I do the rest. That's my plans for this cutting board. It, I'm leaving these. This is not going to be the bottom. It is the top. Just make it different. Okay, I have finished painting this as much as I'm going to. I'm going to let it dry good, and then I'm going to take it to the garage and hit it with the sander before I put my rooster and my... Uh, stencil that I made. Um, I really wanted to leave it plain, but I didn't think my rooster would show up all that well. Oh, my stencil is stuck to my rooster. Anyways, I felt like it needed to be white because I'm going to do this in black and then put the stencil one part here and one part there. So I'm going to let this dry good and take it to the garage and sand it down. 
Okay, now I'm going to work on this board. I have it laid out the way I want it. And I'm gonna stamp this rooster. I stamped it once on there. I can see I'm gonna have to make sure I get certain areas in the feet, so. I did add some ink onto my pad. Be careful not to get it on the edges of the stamp that I don't want. Get his little toes, his comb. why that's not covering in there very well. I wonder if I sanded this any. Okay, I think that's probably good. Make sure I don't have any on the edges. Nope. Alright, I'm going to have to center this on there. There's nothing. Okay, I'm gonna kind of lift it up and see how it's looking. Oh, didn't get right in here. Glad I lifted that up. It's on the crevices where the split of the wood is. It wasn't getting it. Please be on there. It's still not getting right in here. Right in there, right where that wood is split. It is not wanting to take. Come on, stay on there. The foot right in here, where it's split. People make this look so easy. I'm just not used to stamping, though. Have to push really hard to get in the crevices. Well, I think that's probably the best I'm going to get it. Because I am not going to pull it up and try to re-stamp it. It's just where it's... The wood is splits where it's not really getting it. Okay. That's good. You can see. But that's all right. Now... I'm going to get my black ink out, or, yeah, black paint out and do my stencils and then figure out what I'm going to, if I'm going to put these on, the handles on there or not. I'll have to definitely spray paint them because I don't know where I got these, but they were in my stash, stash or peachy color. All right, I'm going to do the stencils and then I'll figure out what, I, what else I'm going to do. 
I have this stenciled and now I'm going to figure out if I'm going to use the handles or not. Or the, yeah, handles. Well, that pulled off some of my paint, but that's okay. It looks good. All right. I'm going to sit here and look at this and figure out what I'm going to do and what I want to do with it. And I'll be back. All right, here is the first one I made. And this was the armrest to the uh, rocker. It was a double seared rocker that was falling apart. Now I'll bring you up a little closer. And like I said, that was the 1889, the date of the Oklahoma land run. And now I'll show you the next one. And here's the second board I done. This was either part of the seat or part of the back of the rocker. And I do have a video that I made that I used the very center of the back of it. And I don't think I mentioned it in the video. And I'll link it below. And right after I show this, I'll uh, put up a quick picture of it so you can see it. It was the very center of the rocker. And I'll give you a little bit of a close-up on what I done. Okay, guys, that's for the that's it for this video. So until the next one, we'll see you later.